Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hounds and for this video I'm going to go through all the Blu-rays and DVDs that I picked up in the month of June yeah, and I've got my dad to help me as well which is awesome Hello So, start with the first one from yeah. Severin and this was actually a gift from Mark of Horror uh, he sent me a few movies this month and I'm going to do a video Mark on the other things you bought me so yeah, first up for Mark of Horror from Severin is Bag Boy, Lover Boy, um, which was not a bad film actually. Quite a, like a gritty sort of maniac style film about this kind of odd guy that gets into photography and ends up killing the women that he photographs. Uh, it's not too bad for something that's a, a bit different. Um, I would like a bit more blood and gore. It seemed like it was sort of going to be that kind of film, but it wasn't. But yeah, not too bad as like a indie kind of bizarre slasher type film. So, that's that one. Yeah. Next up, from Severin again, and also from Mark of Horror, wow. is the, Be the Beast in the Heat, which is an awesome gift, Mark, thank you. I've wanted to get this for a, a long time. It's one of the more notorious video nasties here in the UK. Uh, one of the like, concentration camp movies. I have seen it before, and it's... Uh, it is a pretty good one. It's a, a pretty enjoyable one, although it's uh, a little bit uh, sleazy in places. But yeah, nice release there from Severin. And again, thank you, Mark, for sending me that through. Nice cover. Yeah. Okay, next up is um, Bless the Child, which is one I remember seeing in the video shop years ago. I don't think it was one that I ever rented at the time. So just thought I'd pick this up. Saw it cheap. So, uh, yeah, we'll give this one a watch soon. Mm. Back. Mm. And next up from Mondo Macabre, we've got Blood Ceremony. This is alright. This was a Spanish film, I think. Um, said to be in the same kind of style as Hammer Horror, uh, which it is a little bit. It's got some very good reviews. I didn't think it was quite as good as some of the things I... I read, but mm. was a pretty decent film. Not too bad. Mm. Next up, we have the Boston Strangler, uh, the I think from the sixties yeah. with Tony Curtis. Never seen this, just one that I saw cheap, so I thought I'd pick it up and check it out. I saw that years ago, but I can't remember much about it. Yeah. Next up from Severin and from Mark of Horror again, we have The Boys Next Door, which I don't know too much about. I remember Severin releasing this, but mm. didn't didn't give it too much, never mind. So uh, I think Charlie Sheen and... The young Charlie Sheen. Yeah, young Charlie Sheen and his friend, the serial see killers, that. ground killing people. So yeah, we'll see what that one's like. Mm. Okay, next up we have Come Play. Not watched this one yet. This is a pretty new release. Uh, looks like a bit of a supernaturally type thing. These kids being stalked by this demonic presence or something like that. So, seen a few people picking that one up, but not had a chance to watch it yet. Another one, just uh, another cheap one. Diary of a Serial Killer. Uh, not seen it, but got Michael Madsen and Gary Busey. I thought it was an interesting pairing. So, check this one out soon. Next up from uh, Gator Blade Films, we have Die Die Delta Pi. I thought I got it upside down. Which <laughs> uh, is a very cheap indie type slasher film. <laughs> it's it's not great to be honest. I think it's only about an hour and fifteen minutes long, and the first kill isn't until an hour into it. But it's not bad for a low budget, but a bit slow. You're not selling it, man. No. Next up from Redemption, we have The Erotic Rites of Frankenstein, uh, which is one I was a bit... I wasn't sure about this one. It's a bit of a silly title, and it's Jeff Franco, but I have to say, it's one of Jeff's better films. It was a surprisingly mm. good good movie. Um, pretty stylish for Jeff Franco, and it's seeped in kind of hammer horror-style gothic horror. Mm. So pretty surprising... A pretty surprising pickup that one was, um, a lot better than what I thought it was going to be, and it got Howard Vernon and Dennis mm. Price in as well. So yeah, not too bad. Got 
be both hands for this one. Yeah, yeah. Big box set. This so, is awesome. This is from Severin. This is the Euro Crypt of Christopher Lee collection. Wow. Uh, absolutely beautiful box set from Severin. Uh, it's a number of Christopher Lee's movies from the 60s, which he did in like Italy and things like it's that. Side. So it's got Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace, Challenge the Devil, Crypt of the Vampire, Castle of the Living Dead, The Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism and Theatre Macabre. So, it is a stunning box set. I have heard from a few YouTubers that the films aren't the best. So, mm. if that's the case, that's a real shame. But I will check them out and see what I think. Mm. I think it's like Challenge the Devil. Christopher Lee's only in it for about 30 seconds. So, <laughs> maybe not the best one to put in a Christopher Lee box set. But beautiful set from Severin. Yeah, I said the dark looks amazing. Yeah, very nice. Uh, next up from Imprint, we have the criminally underrated Fire in the Sky from the 90s. This is probably the best alien abduction movie I've ever seen. Um, six guys working out in a Arizona national forest. They see a UFO which abducts one of the guys. They go back and report it to the police in a local town and they kind of understandably are very sceptical and their claims of this guy going missing by... Aliens is met with sort of suspicion and ridicule and things like that. It's all based on a true story as well from the 70s. Mm. Um, but really, really good film. Uh, some good stars in this as well. Uh, you've got Robert Patrick, Henry Thomas, Craig Sheffer, James Garner. Um, so yeah, this, this imprint Blu-ray wasn't cheap, but I think it's limited edition. Mm. And it's uh, one that I really wanted to get for the collection because... Mm. Yeah, like I say, for some reason, it just it, it goes under the radar. And it's such a good film. Highly recommended. Mm. Okay, next up is Freaky. So Vince Vaughn plays this sort of like Jason-type character. And he goes after this teenage girl. And tries to kill her, but for one reason or another, she doesn't die. They, in fact, switch bodies. So this small teenage girl is now a... A homicidal killer and Vince Vaughn is a teenage girl trying to switch back, <laughs> switch back and stop him. It's not too bad. Credit to Vince Vaughn because he, he does rather well playing a, a teenage girl. It's wow. it's all right. <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit of fun. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah. Next up, this is a 4K steel book of Godzilla vs Kong. Mm. Oh, so this one. I like this one more than the recent Godzilla films. Um, they did kind of show the monsters a bit more, which was an improvement. Um, Kong was in it pretty much from start to finish. Godzilla they didn't show in quite as much. Uh, so that was pretty cool. It's got some great scenes. and it's The only thing with this one was... Uh, just had such a complicated story. Um... Yeah, they really kind of, they, I think they kind of under, underestimate the benefits of simplicity with these kind of movies. They really kind of went to some real far out places and mm. I struggled to to follow it. And in some places they were like going to different dimensions and things like that. And it was, it was more like watching 2001 Space Odyssey than a Godzilla film. But yeah, it wasn't bad. It was right. Next up from Screen Factory, we have The Hand, which is one I've wanted to see for a long time, and this one was really good. It's a, essentially a bit of like a B-movie film about a killer severed hand, um, but it's Oliver Stone, so he, he brings a lot more to the story than that. Okay. And uh, Michael Caine, he is a like a cartoonist. He draws comics, but he loses his hand in a car accident, and his life's not going very well anyway. He's, he's not in a good place, and his hand is kind of like a acts as a manifestation and of, of, of how he's feeling and kills people off around him that are doing him wrong. So, yeah, really cool film. I enjoyed The Hand. Mm. Next up, we have Happy Death Day to You. So the sequel to the first Happy Death Day. I enjoyed this one. Uh, not quite as much as the first one, but I still had fun watching this movie. I know this got a bit of criticism for being like more like a comedy than a horror, but uh, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, they kind of go down the rabbit hole a bit with the the whole physics of the time 
the time loop in this one. It was a bit more complicated than what I was expecting, but yeah, I had fun watching that one. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Next up, we have the 1999 remake of The Haunting, which was one that I was actually quite pleasantly surprised with. It was a better film than what I thought it was going to be. Pretty scary in places, and the set design is incredible. Mm. Uh, they actually make these giant interior sets, which are, I think were actually too big for even Paramount Studios. They had to go elsewhere uh, to, to build them. Mm. But part of that film, I, I, I had a conversation with my sister about this because I remember she saw it years ago and was saying how scary it was. And at the time, as a kid, I was like, I'll, I'll give that one a miss. The, the original is really <laughs> scary. Yes, it is. It is. It's but, excellent. Um, but I've not seen the remake. Yes, it's actually not too bad. It's not yeah. too bad. Uh, next up we have I Am Lisa, um, which was okay. It's like an indie horror film. Uh, this girl, she is picked on by these bullies. One of the bullies is related to the sheriff. And it, when she tries to report it... The bullies and the sheriff like beat her up really bad, leave her in the woods. And at that point, she's attacked by a werewolf and comes back and kills off uh, these these bullies and, and the sheriff. It's all right. It's a bit far-fetched that like the bullies and the sheriff would work together and be so horrible. But, yeah, it's not too bad. Next up, we have In the Spider's Web. So these people go to the jungle and just basically get attacked by spiders. They, they fall foul of this clan that worship spiders. It's a bit like a modern Italian cannibal film with spiders and not cannibals and very, very watered down. Mm. <laughs> but I paid like a couple of pounds for it. I, I wouldn't pay any more. It was all right. Next up, we have Jersey Shore Shark Attack. So... Yeah, just uh, a bunch of um, these impossibly good-looking Jersey Shore characters getting attacked by sharks. It's more Jersey Shore than shark attack, to be honest, so it's, yeah, mm. it's all right. Enough said. Yeah. Okay, next, this is a cool purchase. So next up, I've got another one of these Shriek Show triple feature uh, box sets. Shriek Show released these years ago, and I do try and collect them wherever possible, uh, this one's my ninth box set from them. But these are really rare now. You don't see them around at all. And I found this online for like £7. And I, I didn't even think it would be one of these original box sets. But not only is it the original one, it's actually still sealed as well. So £7 for this is a, a fantastic purchase. Mm. And this um, just one, what does that come with? So it comes with Golden Temple Amazons, mm. Amazonia, and Diamonds of Kilimanjaro, which I think is just Franco. Mm. So, yeah, I'll dip into them soon and, and check that out. But that's a, a really good find uh, this month. This looks cool. <laughs> this looks... This look so next up from Wild Eye is Jurassic Dead. It's it's not <laughs> bad. It's the, the cover is the coolest thing about it. Oh, that's um, I'm sorry, that's yeah. Bad. It mainly focuses on in these uninteresting teenagers and zombies. And uh, for a wild eye film, it's not all that wild. This one is strangely quite quite held back uh, for them. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, it's got the, 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 the Jurassic Dead in question are pretty cool. It's just they're not always on the screen all that much. So, perhaps, yeah. perhaps we could have uh, King Kong versus Godzilla and Zombiesaurus. Mm. Yeah, throw them all in together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up is Krampus, which I've never seen. I've never seen Krampus. I have seen this one. Do you like it? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just found it cheap, uh, probably because it was June. Uh, mm. And I'll, yeah, I'll probably save this until Christmas time. But yeah, I watched it at Christmas. Yeah, nice to finally grab that one. Yeah. All right, next up from Second Sight is the limited edition of uh, Late Mungo. Uh, which is a really good film, very, very creepy movie, documentary style about a girl that goes missing at a lake. Um, but weird supernatural things start to happen and there's an array of secrets in her life and around her that kind of lead to her disappearance and and, and act as a reason why there's all these spooky things going on. So, yeah, really good film. Pretty plain cover. It is, actually, yeah. Yeah. But nice, nice release from... Second Sight. Yep. 
Next up from, I think it's from Scorpion, is The Last Victim, uh, which is not too bad. It kind of just all builds up to one sort of event at the end where uh, Tanya Roberts is terrorised by this uh, this psychotic guy. It's not too bad. It's got a small role from uh, Nancy Allen. She pops up in this, so... Yes. Uh, next up we have The Lords of Salem. So, Rob Zombie. I don't think I've seen this one. Uh, Rob Zombie films are a bit of a mixed bag for me. But uh, I'll check this one out and see what it's like. Hopefully it'll be one of his better ones. Mm. Yeah, so next up is The Mothman Prophecies. Uh, never seen this. So again, just saw it cheap on DVD. Mm. Thought I'd pick it up for the collection. Yeah. Looks pretty interesting. Mm. <laughs> well, next, <laughs> next up is uh, Nightmare Shark. Uh, another sort of crappy shark film this month. Just got this one in, so uh, not had much time to look at it yet. I think it's like sharks invading people's dreams or something. I, I don't know for sure, but yeah. <laughs> Freddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Freddy Krueger shark. Freddy the fish. So yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see. Right, next up uh, is The Ninth Gate. Again, another one I've not seen. I've got quite a few uh, more mainstream films this month that I've just never got round to seeing. Mm. So uh, I look forward to checking this one out soon. Sounds pretty interesting. Next up is Open 24 Hours. Uh, this one looks like a bit of a sort of weird psychological thing with this woman being stalked by this figure. Not a chance to watch it yet, but again, it, it looks pretty cool, so check that out soon. Next up, we've got some more anime for the collection, so Pet Shop of Horrors. And this one I, I really enjoyed. This is like an episodic thing, uh, four episodes of this mysterious pet shop that sells this exotic animals and they all sort of come with I don't know like a curse where if you do the wrong thing it, it turns dark and things like that mm. but pretty good stuff I really enjoyed this uh, one of the more enjoyable animes that I've seen next up is the Prodigy, Prodigy uh, which I've seen this a long time ago on Netflix and really enjoyed it um, just wanted to get it for the collection. I don't like watching them and not owning them. So, yeah, finally picked that one up. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool, creepy kid kind of movie. Mm -hmm. Next one is another gift from Mark of Horror. It's Pie Wacket. I think that's how you say that. Uh, this one looks pretty cool. About like a curse, I think, which is bought on this family. Looks like pretty creepy stuff. So, look forward to checking that one out. Mm -hmm. Next up from Severin is uh, Revenge of the Living Dead Girls. This is a French film about this company that they contaminate this milk or something which seems to just kill off these three women mm. and they come back as zombies and attack the people involved. It's, it's pretty good stuff. It mm. doesn't get great reviews but I actually found this one quite enjoyable in like a cheesy, tacky kind of way. Milk in the original crazies, wasn't it? That sounds yeah, really crazy. it sounds right. Next up from Scorpion is Rituals. I uh, did a quick video on this earlier in the month when I was out and about. The R Rituals was fantastic. Really, really good deliverance style horror movie of these doctors getting stalked out on a camping trip. Mm. Really good film. Next up, uh, this film, I actually got this by mistake. <laughs> I ordered a different film and they sent me this. This is Satan's School for Girls. Looks pretty cool, um, pays sort of next to nothing for it, so I just thought I'd keep it and I'll, I'll reorder the other film because I've never seen this before. I think I've seen it, I'm not sure it's a TV movie or It could, yeah, could well be. Yeah. So, yeah. Next up, another crappy shark movie from Screen Factory. <laughs> we have Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. So, <laughs> not a chance to watch this yet. It looks ridiculous. Strange film for Screen Factory to put out. It's not really their kind of thing, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a, at least a fun to a degree. <laughs> so, yeah. Next up again from Mark of Horror, we've got Sharknado 2. I've only got the first one, so, uh, yeah, I'll uh, dip in into the sequels now. I don't know if they can get any more ridiculous, but I'm sure they do as they go along. 
Next up, uh, this was a, quite a hidden gem. Um, this is Summer of Fear, which is a Wes Craven film. Uh, I was not aware of this before picking it up, and it's a really good TV movie from him from 1978 uh, with Linda Blair. And her cousin comes to, to live with her after the mysterious death of her parents. And it turns out that her cousin is like a witch, practising witchcraft. And weird things start to happen around the town and around the house. And Linda Blair has to try and stop it. So yeah, really good film. Surprisingly good that one was. Next up from Screen Factory is Superstition. Uh, another pretty good one uh, in this like old house. Uh, which is haunted and this priest and uh, sheriff have to try and get to the bottom of things one that I've wanted to see for a while so nice to finally pick that one up uh, next up we have Terrifier uh, which is one I didn't own very very popular modern film um, it's taken me now to, to pick it up but uh, Finally gave it a watch and really enjoyed it. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, this is one I want to have a look at. Yeah. I, it was on Netflix for a while and I missed it. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good stuff. Mm. We can borrow it. Cheers. <laughs> but yeah, Art the Clown is, uh, yeah, he's a... He's pretty scary. He is, he's very creepy. Scary. Very creepy guy. Yeah. Um, next up we have The Turning. Oops. Oops. <laughs> uh, which I have not had a chance to watch yet. Looks like another spooky type film. I saw a few people picking this up over the last couple of months, so mm. sort of grab that one. There we go. Next up from 101 Films, we've got uh, mm. Un Uncle Pecker Head. I uh, got this from HMV this month. Th this one was alright, it's got a really good concept of like this rock band going around touring, and they, they pick up this guy as a roadie, this Uncle Pecker Head guy. And it turns out that after midnight, he turns into like a cannibalistic monster. <laughs> and he sort of goes around killing off the people that have done them wrong or shortchanged them and that kind of thing. Uh, not too bad. I would have liked it to be a bit more gory because it kind of promised a bit of blood and gore and it didn't really have that much in it. And I didn't care for the ending that much. I didn't like what they did at the end with the characters. But not bad. It's, it's definitely got a cool story. Right, next up we have... The Wicker Tree. So this is the sequel to The Wicker Man that Robin Hardy did a few years ago. And I actually went to see this years ago at the cinema at a special screening. Um, got to meet Robin Hardy and everything. Um, it wasn't that great to be honest. I didn't really like it in the cinema. It was a bit of a disappointment but I thought I'd pick it up again after all these years and just, just try it again. It's, it's still not great. Um, nowhere near... Uh, as good as The Wicker Man. Um, Christopher Lee does have a cameo in this film, which is almost too good for the film itself. Mm. Um, but interestingly, the ending on this Blu-ray was completely different to the ending I saw in the cinema. Like, completely different. And I did look up if there's any kind of alternative endings that couldn't see anything. So, mm. I don't know what I saw in the cinema, but it was different to the ending of this version. But... Yeah, it's okay. It's a shame when follow-ups disappear. Yeah, man. it's yeah. Alright, next up we have The Wolf of Snow Hollow. Uh this one I really enjoyed. This is about it takes place in this uh snow set town called Snow Hollow, where there's a killer going round who apparently mm. appears to be a werewolf. I say appears to be, there's a bit more to it than that. And this sheriff is trying to track him down. This is really, really good. My only complaint with this is it's it plays out like a horror comedy. And the comedy really didn't fit it because mm. as a horror film, it's actually really good. The werewolf looks fantastic. The kills are pretty bloody and quite harsh. But then it kind of dips in with this Saturday Night Lifestyle humour, which just didn't work for me. Mm. If it had just gone straight horror, it would have been phenomenal. But mm. yeah, but it, it was good. Next up from Shudder, we have The Wrath. Not had a chance to watch this, but I'm a big fan of Shudder. Most of the stuff they put out, I do really enjoy. So hopefully this one will be a good one too. Mm. Just a quick one on the back. And then the last thing I picked up this month was the new Wrong Turn film. <clears throat> uh, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy this one. This one wasn't for me. Um, 
I didn't like the direction it went in and uh, I didn't like the ending either when a certain character turned up somewhere that just was so silly and lost a lot of credibility for me so yeah I it wasn't terrible it had some interesting ideas to it but mm. I would rather watch any other wrong turn film <laughs> over this one put it that way mm. so yes that's uh, the new wrong turn so mm. that's everything that I got this month guys as always please feel free to let me know what you think of the movies thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos bye